Hi, my name is Dave Wilkin. I'm the coordinator of jazz studies at the University of North Carolina at Asheville, a trombonist, and one of my research interests is studying how brass embouchures function. After posting a few videos that describe some basic embouchure principles, I've received some similar questions and comments, both publicly and privately. In this video, I will try to answer some of the more common questions and see if I can clarify some points that I didn't make too clearly in the earlier videos. After watching my video on the brass embouchure and airstream direction, Fresh1994 asked, So an embouchure with the lower jaw receded and the air directed downwards is a downstream embouchure? While a lot of people think the airstream direction is related to the horn angle and jaw position, it's actually which lip predominates inside the mouthpiece that makes an embouchure downstream or upstream. When the mouthpiece is placed with more upper lip inside, the airstream gets blown down, like with this horn player. Players who place the mouthpiece with more lower lip inside, like this trumpet player, blow the air up past the lips and the air strikes the upper cup of the mouthpiece. There are successful downstream players who line up the teeth and play with a horn angle close to straight out, and others who play with their jaw receded and horn angle tilted down. There are also upstream performers who line up the teeth and have a straight out horn angle, and others who have a lower horn angle and receded jaw position. So, jaw position and horn angle are not really determining factors of the player's airstream direction. Practice will help develop embouchure strength and control, but you really can't change the size and shape of the lips, teeth, gums, and jaw, short of braces. Brass players should probably try to adopt the embouchure type that works best with their anatomy. Great Pilot 85 asked about my embouchure motion video. Do you think pushing and pulling is better, or moving the entire horn? Great Pilot 85 is asking about what I'm calling an embouchure motion in these videos. If you watch players closely enough, you'll notice that everyone moves the lips up and down along the teeth with the mouthpiece as they play. Some players, like this trumpet player, pull the mouthpiece and lips together down towards the chin to ascend, and push them up towards the nose to descend. Others, like this trumpet player, do the reverse, pushing the lips and mouthpiece together up towards the nose to ascend, and pulling them down to descend. Changing the angle of the instruments to the lips is a little more difficult to describe and typify. As the lips and mouthpiece rim move along the teeth and gums, their support structure underneath can change. Some players have teeth and gums that are very even and flat, and others are curved. The lower jaw also will sometimes move from side to side and forward to back while changing registers. These and other factors will affect how the embouchure motion and horn angle interact. This is one of those areas that is so personal to the individual player that I can't get more specific than that in this video. Aztec11 asks, I have like three embouchures. One for really high playing, one for really low playing, and one for very basic playing with a little high and low. Horn teachers tell me that it's because I don't use as much upper lip in the mouthpiece, but I'm uncomfortable with that change. However, I do use a lot of upper lip in my low register. My biggest problems in playing are when I have to change from high to low fast, or vice versa. Do you have any advice for me? I've been avoiding offering specific advice in my YouTube videos because without being able to watch a particular player in person, it's really impossible to know for sure if I'm guessing the actual problem. As a general piece of advice though, I personally feel it's best to learn to play your whole range on one embouchure type, rather than switching between types, like this tuba player does. He plays his low register upstream, his middle to upper register downstream, and his highest pitches upstream again. Every player appears to have one embouchure that will work better than the others, but discovering which of your embouchures to stick with, if it's not an entirely different one altogether, can be tricky to figure out.
Unfortunately, there aren't too many brass teachers around who would understand your problem, but the best advice I can really offer anyone via the internet is to see a teacher in person. Commenting on the downstream and upstream embouchures and the embouchure motion, Stephen Jacobs L. wondered, I don't get why horn players would do either. I play all in the center of the horn mouthpiece, and my tone and control are fine. I never move lower or higher to hit higher range notes. The only time I move down is to hit the lowest notes, which are double pedal and are never used. I think that regardless of the placement, the sound is the only matter of dispute. When you produce something beautiful, and you can reproduce it, who cares how you do it? Stephen has the right idea. A player's embouchure should be based on how well it works, not on how it looks. There are great players who place the mouthpiece very high in the lips, very low, around the middle, and even off to one side. Small anatomical differences between players can sometimes result in very different looking embouchures, so trying to make your embouchure fit an arbitrary model won't work for most players. There are some players who play well with a mouthpiece placement close to half and half, but one lip or another will predominate and the airstream will be blown upstream or downstream. For a lot of players though, a half and half placement results in problems. Sometimes half and half placement will allow the player to flip the direction of their airstream, like this tuba player from earlier. For other players, a half and half placement simply won't allow them to focus their lips in a way that works with their anatomy, like this trumpet player. The airstream needs to go up or down, and sometimes the mouthpiece needs to be placed higher or lower to allow the player to direct the airstream properly. Much like the embouchure motion, mouthpiece placement is very personal to each individual player. Also, the embouchure motion doesn't mean moving the position of the mouthpiece on the lips to a higher or lower position. I think the mouthpiece should remain on the same spot on the lips throughout the entire range. The mouthpiece and lips together get slid to a new position over the teeth and gums. I don't want anyone to be confused about my points here. I'm not per se recommending that brass players need to consciously adopt an upstream or downstream embouchure and coordinate their embouchure motion throughout their entire range. These principles are just what happens with any well-functioning brass embouchure. I think that brass teachers who grasp these basic embouchure characteristics can use their understanding to troubleshoot the exact cause of embouchure difficulties, rather than relying on a specific exercise or practice approach that may not be suited for the particular player's issues. Brass players who understand their own embouchure type can follow the successful examples of similar players, rather than practicing in a way that might be more effective for a different embouchure type. That's all the time I have for now. If all I've done is raised other questions, or if you have a different opinion you'd like to share, please leave your comment here. Please keep in mind that I can't help with your specific embouchure unless I can see it in person. Thanks for watching.